Welcome, my friends, to a whole new challenge. We're not going to train the team. We're not going to coach the team. We are not even going to select the team. We start today as the director of football. Greetings my friends and welcome back to the channel. I'm Kirk Sheridan and you're joining me today for part one of the Director of Moneyball series. Now there is one thing I want to make very, very clear. This is not a video or a series where we give responsibility for transfers to the Director of Football and just worry about the coaching and the tactics and all that kind of thing. No, no, no. This is the opposite. We're not getting involved in coaching, tactics, match selections, or even watching the matches live. So when setting yourself up to play as a director of football in this way, first things first, choose your team just like any other game. We are going with Worthing. Now, Worthing are new to the Vanarama South this year, so it's a perfect opportunity to basically have a blank slate probably fairly low expectations and an opportunity to really build from the bottom up then pick your managerial style now there are a number of different ways that you could go about this you could set yourself up based on the club that you're looking after but to be honest when we're staying completely clear of most aspects of the game that people tend to get stuck into we need to do something a little bit different and this is the setup that I recommend. No coaching badges, but international global level playing experience. Now, what this will allow you to do is basically put all of your attributes into the mental side of things and completely ignore, for the most part, the coaching attributes. Now, I'm intending to stay with Worthing for the duration of my career, so I'm going to drop our adaptability right down to one. What I do want, though is some very strong knowledge of players. There we go. That's the setup that we are going for for this director of football save. You may think it's cheating a bit to have stats this high at uh, such a low level of the game. Trust me, <laughs> you need to find good players because you're relying on staff who may not be quite as proficient at uh, deciding how to set up a team. And there we have it. Worthing have hired Kirk Sheridan. And here are the expectations for this season. Oh my goodness. The board expect us to reach the playoffs in our first ever season at this level. No pressure there then. Our supporters simply desire a top half finish. So they're being slightly more realistic, I think, than our current board. Are we scheduling a press conference, an intra-squad friendly? No. We're not getting involved in that side of things. We do want, however, a meeting with our backroom staff every week to make sure that we're keeping a focus on everything else going on behind the scenes at the club. The next thing to do before you click anything on this screen, make sure you're setting the staff responsibility so that you are taking care of director of football duties only. Are we going to handle team selection? No, we're delegating it. We will, however, hire and fire the director of football, the technical director, all of the staff, and I mean all of the staff, and we will decide who is taking coaching courses. We will also take responsibility for all contract negotiations. Now, advice and reports. Make sure that you're getting recruitment and scout feedback from your chief scout if you happen to have one. I'll show you the reason why for that shortly. Anything that the director of football would be responsible for, you take responsibility for. So take control of assigning scouts, take control of handling the scouting meetings. When it comes to transfers, make sure you've got control of everything. When it comes to contracts, everything. When it comes to the media, delegate all of that out. When have you ever seen a director of football taking a post-match interview? Training, delegate that stuff out as well. You're not getting involved at all. You might, however, want to just keep receiving training emails to see how players are progressing and developing. Tactics, delegate everything. For the match, delegate everything. Next, take a look at your staff. 
and get ready to say goodbye to one of them because you need to sack your director of football. Why on earth am I sacking my director of football, I hear you ask? Well, you're the director of football now, so you don't need one on the books. It's cheating. They'll give you recommendations for players that you've never heard of. That's your job. It's your job to go and find them. So goodbye, Nathan. It's been nice knowing you. Shame you're also a coach. But we'll worry about that in the near future. The second crucial staffing decision is decide whether you want to keep your assistant manager. You need to be looking for managerial attributes. You need someone who can motivate, who's good with people, can judge player ability and potential, and has sound tactical knowledge. We don't need them to coach, but we need them to be able to pick a good team, and make changes in the match, because we're not getting anywhere near that. As well as that, the tactical style and preferred formations are absolutely key because when you leave everything to your assistant manager on match day, as I will show you how to do, they will play what they want to play. So it's absolutely crucial that you have an assistant manager whose play style and formation you can fully get behind and want to see your team playing. Otherwise, you'll end up bringing in a load of great technical players and your manager there will play route one and it will fall flat on its face. <laughs> so here's an example of a view that you can use to get the kind of information that you need at a glance. We can see the tactical style of the staff member, their preferred formation, their second preferred formation, their playing mentality that they tend to prefer, and the kind of pressing and passing style that they will tend to fall back on as well. And then the attributes at the end. So I'm now going to search for assistant managers who have decent ratings in the manager's attributes and also working with youngsters because another key part of director of football's responsibility, of course, is bringing in those young players who can be sold for a profit at a later date. Let's see if anybody shows up on this list. One member of staff tends to play a Catanaccio 4-4-2. That isn't exciting me a huge amount, I have to be honest decrease those expectations a touch dave hedges looks like a very interesting option playing tiki taka in the panorama south four two three one i think i'm gonna see what dave hedges might want to join us 180 quid a week what do you say excellent he's on board he will evaluate his decisions well that's a good start so that does mean, I'm afraid, Mick, that we're going to offer you mutual termination as well. That route one, five, two, one, two is just not what I'm looking to play. Then you do need to give your coaching staff a little bit of a helping hand. Go to the tactics screen, set up your tactical style to match that of your assistant manager. So I'm setting it up to match that tiki taka of our hopefully new assistant manager. Match the formation as well. And don't worry at all about who fits in where. What that will do is then allow your coaching staff to base their training off of the expectation that they will play this tactic. Obviously, you're not going to be involved in choosing who plays, but at least you're helping the assistant manager to make sure that his style of play will be committed to on the training ground. So there we've got the 4-2-3-1 as our primary tactic and the 4-4-2 narrow diamond as our secondary tactic, completely in line with what Dave Hedges prefers to play. So our finances have taken a hit from that, uh, from those mutual terminations, as you would expect. And we are currently maxed out on our wage budget. So if we want to bring anybody new in, we're going to need to ship some players out. The next rule for playing as director of football is a pretty straightforward one always do what the rest of your staff say they're going to be giving you advice on captaincies they're going to be giving you advice on training team selections tactical selections go with a lot of it because you're not getting involved the best way to do that is to attend every team meeting and basically just accept whatever's thrown your way 
One thing you can absolutely tell them to forget about, though, is when they recommend staff to you, because that is not something we want to hear. We're going to be searching for staff ourselves. We're going to be looking for responses to adverts ourselves. So we don't want to see that topic again. Thank you very much. And the final critical thing to know when playing as a director of football is how to alleviate yourself from any responsibility whatsoever on match day. It just so happens that Worthing do not yet have an under-18s manager, so I am being asked to manage the team. I choose not to. This is a very, very simple thing to do. When you hit match day, go back to the homepage and send yourself on holiday for one day. You can also, if you want to cheat a little bit, use the current match tactics and current team selection where possible, but we are firmly committed to letting our staff make those decisions for us. So I have no idea what the team is going to be for this under-18s match. I've got no idea what formation we're even going to play because we're going on holiday and we will come back tomorrow. Turns out we won 1-0. You can go back into the match report and find out how we set up. We did play the 4-2-3-1. We can even go back and watch the goals to see how the team actually performed. Or in fact, any of the highlights. You can select to view the key highlights, but that was a quality finish from a quality ball. Uh, Under-18s are off to a winning start. So that going on holiday option is everything you need as a director of football to leave your staff in charge on match day to use whatever formation, whatever tactics they feel are best suited to the match ahead of them. And there you have it. From this point on, you are geared up and ready to go to be the director of football, to give up all responsibility and all influence over team selection, over tactics, over training. Oh, this is going to be fun. In the case of the squad here at Worthing, I'm already looking at where I need to improve the squad. I'm also looking at some of the gaps that we have across our staff team. You can take this style of playing into your game. If you do, please Drop me a comment below. Tell me how you're finding it, how you're getting on. Ask me any questions. But this is not just a one-off video. This is the first part of a series. In episode two, we find out how to truly become the director of Moneyball. If you've enjoyed this video today, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and turn your notifications on to find out the second part two drops. In the meantime, be excellent to each other. I'm looking forward to seeing you again soon. I'm Kirk Sheridan. Thank you for watching.